there are a lot of big diamonds left out here to be found. Maybe you'll find the next national record breaker. Since I have over a 30 year association with the park and I dig out here a lot, people ask me, where's the best place to look for diamonds? Well, I'll have a real good answer for you on that later, but what I usually tell people is search anywhere in the 38 acre search field except under the Uncle Sam sign because people dig here a lot. It's the most searched through 10 square feet on the whole search area. And I say just don't look under this sign because it's already been looked through. Well, in June of 06, a nine year old girl from Illinois, Courtney Condor, came here and didn't ask the old expert his opinion. She got a little hand shovel and dug under this sign and found a 1.11 carat diamond. So it baffles me. Diamonds can be found anywhere out here. And uh, I want to tell you a story about another young person that had uh, success with a little hand shovel like this. My wife Cindy worked here two summer seasons in rock, mineral, and gem identification. And that first summer that she was here, a busload of 46 kids from the Southern Christian home in Moralton, Arkansas, arrived and they scattered out over the search field and before long a couple of the boys found three baby bunnies out on the search field and word spread among the group about the baby bunnies and one of the guys, a 12 year old boy named Alex Franceschi, heard about the bunnies and decided he was going to go see them. Well on his way he stopped with a little shovel like this and got to hand digging and turned out a 2.24 carat beautiful yellow diamond. The headlines in the local newspaper the next week said, boy looking for rabbits finds carrots instead. Since we're talking about finding diamonds by surface searching, we have to mention John Huddleston, who found the first diamonds here. Shortly after he bought it, this farm, he just knew there was something special about it and he combed the field looking for something of value. Uh, he found some quartz crystals, then on August 8, 1906, he found a pebble that was shinier than the quartz. It really stuck out to him. When he picked it up, he turned it every which way, and it just blazed fire up at him. And he thought, how can I be sure this is a diamond? I think I've found a diamond. So he took it back to his barn where he had an ax sharpener. And he put it against that grinding wheel. And after he held that for a while as it was spinning, he couldn't cut a groove in that. And the man that sold him that ax sharpener said that it would, it would sharpen anything but a diamond. And here, the pebble he held in his hand put a groove in that ax sharpening wheel. So he was convinced he had a diamond. So he saddled up the mule and he took his new shiny pebble to Murfreesboro. Well, on the way, going up the lane, he saw something else flash fire at him. He dismounted the mule, got down, picked up another shiny pebble, took it into town, into Murfreesboro, and convinced a man there to mail it off to a jeweler who then sent it to a world-renowned gem expert who was vice president of Tiffany & Company in New York. His name was Dr. George F. Coons. Coons examined him, and he knew what uncut diamonds looked like, and he wired back that these were indeed genuine diamonds and of the finest quality. The first one he found was three carats, and the other was four and a half carats. And that set off the nation's first diamond rush here. Back in 1906, diamonds could be found right on top of the ground. Things haven't changed much. You can still find diamonds right on the surface, walking around. A good time to search for diamonds is right after the bulldozer has gone through and deep ripped the soil and flipped it up into giant furrows. Another time they say is a, a good time to surface search is right after a rain. Well, that's true and not so true. It's good in that there are diamonds fresh washed, you know, the silt is washed away from the diamonds. They're, they're there to be seen, but it can also be a muddy mess walking around you. You need to walk on top of the furrows where it's not quite as wet instead of uh, down in the mud puddles because the clay can stick like gumbo to your boots and you'd be walking around and 20 pound boots, but don't get discouraged walking around thinking, oh, people have walked over this ground and found all the diamonds, there isn't anything left here to be found. They keep finding more diamonds every year. And remember the 
15 and a third carat star of Arkansas was found just a few inches from a man's footprint. The second most common method for finding diamonds at the crater is dry sifting. Uh, it's real simple and basic. You just pick a spot, scoop up the dry soil right from the ground and throw it in a screen to sift it. This works great in the summertime. Then you just take and shake your screen and you look through, you look through it for sparklers. Whatever you find that sparkles, put it in a bag, a Ziploc bag or something, to take to the Diamond Discovery Center later and then they can identify your finds. They can tell you whether it was a quartz crystal or a lot of times people will see mica shining at them. Mica is really like gold glitter. If you see it sparkle, you won't even be able to pick it up. It's just a little flake. If you think you've found a diamond, do not try to put it through some kind of hardness test. Just take it to the Diamond Discovery Center and they can tell you whether what you found is a diamond or not. I heard just last week somebody was out here, thought they'd found a diamond, they laid it on a rock, took a hammer and hit it really hard. Well, it shattered and they said, well, it must not have been a diamond. It could have been a diamond. They might have found a diamond and then shattered it. Uh, diamonds are the hardest substance on earth, but they're also brittle. They have cleavage planes in it and you can shatter them by striking it with a hammer or hitting it between two rocks. You can bust and bust a crystal and ruin it. But uh, you don't need to give it any special test. Just take it to the Diamond Discovery Center and they'll tell you whether you found a diamond or not. On my first visit here to the Crater of Diamonds in 1978, I dry sifted. My brother and I both shook the ore through the screens and, and looked for diamonds. So we tried that method and surface searching on our, our first trip. The third most common method for searching for diamonds at the park is uh, wet sifting. Very similar to dry sifting. You go out with your shovel and bucket and scoop up material, but in this case, you take your bucket to a wash pavilion and put your screens down in water and wash it through there. Now, I think you can do a greater volume of material by wet sifting instead of dry sifting because the water helps flush the dirt and gravel through the screens quicker, easier, more efficiently. Now, there's two main keys to finding diamonds at the crater, doing a volume of material and washing the right kind of material. Now, here's a million dollar question. Where should I dig? What is the right material? There's 38 acres out here to search in. Where can I best spend my day when I come to the park? And uh, here's the key, if you're listening, if you want a clue from a guy who's done this, dig where the diamonds are naturally concentrated. The volcano put an even distribution of diamonds throughout this whole park. As the bulldozer makes the furrows and turns the rows over, uh, diamonds are on the top and they're in the bottom of the rows. Well, when it rains, the silt washes off the top of the rows and leaves diamonds on the top for surface searchers to find. But what about the diamonds that are in the bottom of the rows when it rains? Well, they wash with the silt down these ditches and drains. And then they tend to naturally concentrate in the low spots. So the thing to do is take a probe. This is a, a rod with a T-handle. You can get them at a hardware store a probe and you can stick in the ground and you're listening for a gravelly crunch. This is all silt in here, but keep following it downstream until you find gravel. You can push this rod in the ground and uh, if, it, if it doesn't crunch, that's just silt. But you push it in and follow your way down here and then also if it goes in real deep somewhere, then you'll know, okay, here's a trap, look at that. I didn't even know this was here because looking at the surface, uh, it's all level. But right here, there's like a hole in the ditch. This is a good natural trap as the diamonds and wash down here with the silt. The light silt will wash away and the heavy material will fall to the bottom and drop in this hole. So this would be a good place to dig. You can also probe along here and it looks like miners have set traps. The guys that come out here a lot will set a trap in these drains so that when a diamond washes down, it'll catch in front of, behind, or around this rock. So you can move this rock, dig down, clean all the material around that. You can follow right on down the ditch, feel for the gravel, 
feel where you want to dig, here's another trap somebody set. So you can dig in front of it, behind it, under it, around it, get all that material. But wash the stuff that has gravel in it because diamond is a rock. It's going to be found in with other rocks. Well, the probes told me that this is kind of a hole in the ditch. It looks good to me. Now the top stuff is light silt and I just want to throw it off. There's no, no gravel in that. I'm not going to waste my time processing something that doesn't have gravel in it. The, uh, the gravel's on down deeper here. The silt is on the top, but the gravel's in the bottom. So when you hear that shovel crunch, you know that's the stuff you want. It doesn't look any different, but you can tell by the sound and the feel of the shovel going into the, into the dirt that we're down to the gravel now. This is where the heavier stuff is. The diamonds won't be on the top. They'll be down in the hole. They'll be in that trap. So this is the stuff we want to take over and wash. All right, we're at the bottom of the hole. We can take this over, wash it, and see what we got in it. So if you choose to search for diamonds using the wet sifting method, you bring it to one of the wash pavilions where they've got vats full of water waiting for you here. And you uh, have a stack of screens. You can either bring your own or rent them from the Diamond Discovery Center. This top screen is a quarter inch screen. And the next one is an eighth inch screen. And then we have like a window screen fine mesh. So we're gonna sort the gravel according to size. They all stack on top of each other. And uh, you set it down in the water. There's a grate that holds it here and the mud will fall on down through the grate. And then later, the uh, staff at the park here comes and dumps these vats out and gets all the mud out of them and washes them out and fills them back up with clean water. And right now, we're working on making their water dirty. We're washing all the mud out of, out of this sample and getting everything sorted to size. It's good to wear gloves because it kind of grinds on your hands as you're scrubbing against these screens. And also, if you come on a cold day, this water can be kind of cold, so gloves are almost a necessity to wear in those cases. But when you get all just quarter inch material in the top screen, you can pretty well throw that out in the sun to dry because a diamond that size you'd spot right off, right off the bat. Then you can go to washing your eighth inch screen material and all the mud and silt is washing out of this and it's breaking down really good. When you get that clean, you can set it aside and we'll saruka that in a minute. The last one we're scrubbing here is this window screen size. And now that those rocks are cleaned up, we're ready to use a saruka that will help put the diamonds in the center of uh, of a pile so that we can find it. Now the uh, type of Saruka I'm going to use is a, a flat one. The uh, one that was first introduced from South America is kind of a curved one. Either one works equally well. Uh, different miners have different preferences, but today I'm going to use this flat one. I'm going to put all my fine gravel over into this. And you jig it up and down with your hands in the water and then you throw it all to the center and jig it around like this. Now diamonds are denser than the other rocks and they will go to the bottom and work to the center while you're working the lighter material to the outside. And after you're done jigging that up and down, you can let the water kind of run out of it. Then you take it over and, and flip it on this table. You flip it over and your heavy material has concentrated in the center of the pile. You can kind of tell by the white color. There's also spinel and hematite in the middle as well. But just to show you that this does work and I do trust this method for finding diamonds, I'm going to put a diamond in here and I'm confident we won't lose it. I'm confident that this Saruka, I'll be able to find it again. But the diamond is denser or heavier than the other rocks. Even though they're all like sized, uh, the lamperite has a specific gravity of 2.14. In other words, two times heavier or denser than water. And uh, the 
other rocks like the jasper and quartz have a density of 2.65. Well, the diamond has a density of 3.52 or three and a half times denser than water. So this method will concentrate the diamond together in the center with the other dense or heavy materials. Now uh, we can flip it over and see if we can find that diamond we put in this gravel. Here's the diamond right in the center with the other dense rocks, the hematite and barite, spinel. This is a 1.43 carat diamond and I, uh, I'm just using it for the demonstration. On March 11, 2006, Marvin Culver, an Oklahoma state trooper, was sitting at his home in Nowata, Oklahoma, watching a special on the Travel Channel. It was about the Crater of Diamonds, and he said to his wife, Lyndall, you know, I've been meaning to go there for years. It's spring break. Why don't we grab the niece and nephew and just drive on down to Murfreesboro and see what that diamond field is all about? So the very next day, on March 12, 2006, they were here and took a little uh, diamond demonstration, uh, Diamond Mine in 101, kind of learned what to do. They rented a little equipment. They came out to this spot, just eight feet off of the path here between the two wash pavilions, and he dug four inches deep and loaded up one and a half buckets of material, carried it over to wash it, and found a 4.21 carat canary yellow diamond. Gorgeous, flawless gem. And later that week, when news broke, they were flown to New York City and they were on the Today Show and MSNBC and Inside Edition. And later the Travel Channel heard that he found a big diamond after watching the Travel Channel special. So they came and filmed another Travel Channel special about Marvin and his family finding that uh, big, valuable gem here. This old hand pump and wash trough and this whole area, this southwestern section of the search field is known as the pig pen area for obvious reasons. It gets muddy when people are around this trough uh, wet sifting and uh, washing their gravel here in this water. Um, before the state park built the two new wash pavilions, uh, this pig pen trough and the one at the north end by the mine shaft building were the only two places you could wash and wet sift. Uh, this is where I came in the summer of 78 as a tourist. I came one day and then I found my way down here and saw people diligently working in the mud and I thought they must be finding diamonds or they wouldn't be knee deep in mud working that hard. So I asked one of the guys if he had been finding any diamonds and he said, oh yeah. And I said, do you have any on you? And he said, yes. And he reached in his pocket and pulled out a medicine bottle and took the cap off. He said, hold out your hand. So I held out my hand and he rolled about three beautiful diamonds into the palm of my hand. Made me a little nervous standing in all this mud with those diamonds, but they flashed up at me, looked so pretty. They weren't huge diamonds, but they were beautiful diamonds. And I thought, I have got to find some of these. So I went back to Kansas and quit my job and packed up the camping gear and came down for seven weeks and camped out in the summer of 78. And while I was here, some of the guys that were doing it quite a bit, almost full time, uh, gave me some pointers, a little direction, where to dig, what to do, how to process for diamonds. And one of the guys that really took me under his wing and helped me and coached me was George Stepp. And the year before, it was in 1977, he had been digging in the pig pen area, and he found a four and a quarter carat canary yellow diamond. It was a beautiful gem, and he ended up selling it to a jeweler in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, by the name of Stanley Kahn. Well, Mr. Kahn set it uncut in a necklace, and he loaned it to a friend of his named Hillary, who wore it to a gubernatorial inaugural ball. And four years later, when her husband was elected to another term as governor, she wore the Con Canary diamond again. And then later, when Bill Clinton was elected president of the United States, she wore the Con Canary diamond set in a ring this time to the presidential inaugural ball. And then when he was reelected to a second term as president, uh, she wore the diamond in a, a different ring setting. So she wore it to four inaugural balls. And so this has become a real 
famous Arkansas diamond. And uh, it's traveled around the world and has been on display uh, in several countries. And it, it's represented the state of Arkansas and the United States well because it's a high quality, uh, uncut, lovely, genuine diamond from Arkansas. I found my first 10 diamonds right here at this spot in the pig pen area in the summer of 1978. The largest diamond I've ever found in my 30 plus year association with the park was found right here. It weighed 1.20 carats, in other words about 1 and 1 fifth carats, but it was a brown that had some carbon and some other problems with it, so it wasn't a real pretty diamond, but my most favorite diamond I've ever found here at the crater was also found right here. It was a 78 point, in other words a little over three quarter of a carat, flawless yellow canary diamond that set uncut in a ring that my wife wears today. Now, since I was finding diamonds, I got all excited and called my brother in Kansas and said, you need to get down here. We're finding diamonds and you can find some too. So he was here the next day and I set him up in a hole over here and said, this would be a good place to dig. And he dug here for a week and washed through a bunch of stuff. And he really only found one kind of ugly little industrial diamond. And so he got discouraged and gave up and went home. And then he said, Glenn, do you want to get into my hole? And I said, but nah, you're not finding anything there, so I don't think I want to spend any time over there. And I was finding diamonds there anyway. So his hole remained open for a couple of weeks. And then an Oklahoma farmer came down here with his family, got in my brother's old abandoned hole, dug around, and loaded up the dirt in a little old toy red wagon and hauled it to where his wife, Betty Lamley, was going to wash the ore. And they took the wagon and tipped it over because they were going to come back and load it up again and get some more ore. But when they tipped it over, before she ever washed a cup of dirt in her life, there sitting on top of the mound was a huge 8.61 T brown color diamond. It was gorgeous. In fact, it remains the third largest diamond found here at the state park since 1972. In April of 1998, Carol Stevens, who was retirement age, and her elderly mother, Mary Dickinson, were walking along here, and they both stopped because they saw something glittering in the ground up there. And they walked up and pulled out a 7.28 carat canary yellow diamond. Now, it's not all jemmy, but it's a lovely mineral specimen. It's a nice large diamond from here, and it, they just found it surface searching. It was their third day of looking, but they were persistent and they walked all over the field and they saw something glittering. They were at the right angle of the sun that just made that shine and uh, they went over and, and picked up that uh, nice sized gem. So I found diamonds here and uh, an 8.61 was found here, a 7.28 was found here. Let's go over and see what this sign is marking and see uh, what kind of diamond was found over there. Carol Blankenship came here in 1981 and dug and unearthed an 8.82 carat white gorgeous diamond that he named the Star of Shreveport. It's the second largest diamond to be found here since it became a state park in 1972 and this diamond is now in the Haran collection.